What, what I really want to try to uh, achieve here is to make Mars seem possible. There, there, there are really two fundamental paths. One path is we stay on Earth forever, um, and then there will be some eventual extinction event. Uh, the alternative is to become a spacefaring civilization and a multi-planet species. Why Mars? That they're actually fairly, they're remarkably close in a lot of ways. In, in fact, um, we now believe that, that early Mars was a lot like Earth. So we just need to change that bottom row. Because currently we have 7 billion people on Earth and zero on Mars. The issue that we have today is that there's no intersection of sets of people who want to go and, and can afford to go. An optimistic cost number would be about $10 billion a person. And if we can get a co the cost of moving to Mars to be roughly equivalent to a median house price um, in, in the US, uh, which is around $200,000, then I think the probability of establishing a self-sustaining civilization is very high. So it, it is a bit tricky. We have to figure out how to improve the cost of trips to Mars by 5 million percent. These are the key elements that are needed in order to uh, achieve the 4.5 order of magnitude improvement. With frequent flights, you can take something like that, uh, an aircraft that costs $90 million. Uh, if it was single use, you'd have to pay half a million dollars per flight. So picking the right propellant is also important. I think of this as maybe this, this three main choices, that methane actually was the, the, the clear winner. And this is, a, this is a simulation of the overall system. This is to give you a sense of size. So I think at least 100 people per trip is, is the right order of magnitude, and I think we actually may end up expanding the, the, the crew section and, uh, and ultimately taking more like 200 or more people per flight in order to reduce the cost per person. So it's, it's, it's probably somewhere between you know, maybe 40 to 100 years uh, to achieve a, a fully self-sustaining civilization on Mars. Uh, it, it's made primarily of an advanced carbon fiber, and, and like I said, this is all designed so that you could actually lose multiple engines, um, e even at liftoff or anywhere in flights, and continue the mission safely. The trip time um, at six kil kilometers per second, departure velocity can be as low as 80 days. Uh, ultimately, I suspect um, that you, you'd see Mars transit times of as little as 30 days in, in the more distant future. I mean, in order to make it appealing um, and, and increase that portion of the Venn diagram where people actually want to go, um, it's got to be really fun and exciting. The crew, the crew compartment or the occupant compartment is set up so that you can do zero-G games, you can float around, uh, there'll be like movies, uh, lecture halls, um, you know, cabins, um, a restaurant, it'll be like really fun to go. You're gonna have a great time. Really, really the key is, uh, is making this affordable to uh, almost anyone who wants to go. The architecture allows for a cost per ticket um, of less than $200,000. Maybe, maybe as little as $100,000, depending upon how much mass a person takes. So, we're, so then what about uh, beyond Mars? So there's, there's obviously the rocket booster, the spaceship, uh, the tanker, and the propellant uh, plant. If you have all of those four elements, um, you, you can actually go anywhere in the solar system by, by, by planet hopping or, or moon hopping. But, but by establishing a propellant depot, th this system really gives, gives you freedom to go anywhere you want in the greater solar system. This is to give you a, a sense of size. So it's quite big. Um, yeah.